It feels like the Pizzaplex closed ages ago. When you roll up outside, you notice how dilapidated the building looks, how aged the newspapers covering the windows are, yet you are determined. You climb into the Pizzaplex through the broken window and after picking the glass out of your palms, you drop down into the lobby. You look around at the ruins of what was once a paradise of pure childhood joy and rampant consumerism and know what you must do. You reach into your pocket for your constant companion, your one tool for this important job, a tube of chapstick. Time to get smoochin'. So you might remember that not too long ago I did the animatronic smooching guide, a guide not only to choosing the best and worst smooches, but going through dangerous fights, various hazards, weighing sympathy and danger, and eventually crowning the most smoochable animatronic. But Ruin has brought forth a plethora of new animatronics, and since I don't want to drop these bots into a pool with maybe the book animatronics, I think it's worth giving them their own, if a little shorter, video. Animatronics are ranked on six different traits, getting either two, one, or no points for each. The highest score is 12, the lowest is zero, and animatronics who cannot be smooched because they are intangible or can't physically be touched are listed as disqualified. The animatronic rankings are as followed. Number one, do they have lips? Number two, do they have a dangerous bite? Number three, will they bite? Number four, any hazards? Number five, any sympathy? And number six, are they cute? Now, because the animatronics in Ruin are, uh, in a much more destroyed state than their previous versions, I'm going to go a little more gentle in some places. By which I mean, almost all of these animatronics could maybe be rated as hazardous, dangerous, stuff like that. But I won't be so harsh so that I can kind of show a distinct difference in between the bots. I'm basically ranking them against each other. So assume that they would be, regardless of points, a little less smoochable compared to any fully intact animatronics. You feel me? Yeah. Okay, so let's begin. The Ruined Animatronic Smooching Guide. Huzzah! Let's begin with Ruined Chica. Starting by scraping the bottom of the can with this one, while Glamrock Chica was a cutie with a bad habit of eating trash, Ruin Chica has degraded from hot mess to hot garbage. Her belly filled with rotten foodstuff and a foul trash bag, her mouth covered in some spongy, slimy webbing that I think might be moldy and melted cheese, and if that wasn't bad enough, she's also falling apart at the seams, and she's become even more zombie-like. Does she have lips? No. Dangerous bite? Very much so. So Chica might not have that much of a lower jaw or that much power behind her bite, but her gaping maul is fully capable of grinding up plastic, food stuff, and whatever else have you to shove down her gullet. Though, compared to some of the other shattered animatronics, her bite is a little weaker, so I'll only give her one point. But will she bite? Yeah. Chica's not all there. She's hungry and out to chomp down on anyone who gets in her way. And though she is rather slow and meandering, she does have some amount of strength, enough to hold off a concrete slab and break through barricades. She could be dangerous. Any hazards? Huh, are you kidding? I would go out on the limb to say that Ruin Chica is more hazardous than Glamrock and Shattered Chica combined because of a few key things. Not only is her body more degraded, but so is the trash she's consuming. Chica used to eat out of a seemingly fresh trash cans. Sure, that food stuff is gross and can have a degree of bacteria on it, but it's not nearly as hazardous as waste that's been sitting out in a big pile for an unknown amount of time. She's going to make you sick. If not from the smell, then probably from salmonella. Any sympathy points? Now, while Chica is a brainless zombie of an animatronic, I do feel a lot of sympathy for her. Seeing her get repeatedly shocked as she's trying to climb out of a broken recharge station, seeing her hunched down, gulping down trash in an abandoned building, she is broken beyond repair. Even though she doesn't have the sweet personality that some of the others have, I do feel bad for her. And is she cute? No, no, she's... no. This makes Chica's total a 3. That's pretty fair considering everything I just mentioned. A smooch with Chica would be like this. You find her somewhere, possibly in the kitchen, and you hope that she shuts down or collapses or otherwise checks out before you try to smooch. Elsewise, she will shove you down and gnaw at your face. 
You then peel back the slimy, stringy webs of moldy cheese and attempt to plant a kiss on the gaping endoskeleton maw underneath. It smells bad, it feels bad, and you better run fast when you're done because unless you brought disinfectant, you might be in trouble. Now let's move on to Ruined Monty. While Monty had a problem with his temper, Ruined Monty is a feral beast a slave to his own hunting instinct. No longer cool and gator-like, he charges headfirst with the goal of tearing into fresh flesh at any expense, even his own. He is unable to be reasoned with, now just primal instinct and little else. No lips, not much of a casing at all, really. Dangerous bite? Very. Where many of the other animatronics are lacking fully functional mouths, Monty's mouth is pretty much the only part of him that is still working at full power. Rows of pointed teeth, some broken and jagged, line the inside of a powerful metal jaw. This makes for a ruthless bite. And would he bite? Yes, as I said, Monty's main goal, even putting aside his own safety and well-being, is to sink his teeth into your calf. So, don't expect to even get a chance to convince Monty for a smooch. He will be trying to tear you into pieces the moment he sees you. Any hazards? Definitely. While Monty isn't slathered in grossness, he pretty much has no casing remaining. His body is jagged metal and sharp pieces that, being dragged along the floor and through grimy water, will likely be a one-way ticket to tetanus. Long hooked claws and wires loose for a waist, Monty is dangerous even with his mouth closed which it frequently isn't. Any sympathy points? Well, Monty's unrestrained aggression makes it hard to feel bad for him. At least Chica seems to be so out of it that her aggression could be attributed to her simply not being there. But Monty is there. He's got the eyes and awareness of a predator on the prowl, even though he's not exactly the best at it. That being said, Monty's existence is now so awful that I feel sort of obligated to give him a sympathy point. We don't really know what's going on in his head, so I'm giving him the benefit of a doubt. And finally, is he cute? No, not really, not anymore. Shattered Monty might have been a little cute, but Ruined Monty is just too deconstructed for that. So Ruined Monty gets a 2. The biggest problem here is the extreme aggression. If he was just a little more chill, we could maybe work with his deconstructed state, but he's just so intense that it's hard to justify any contact. A smooch with Monty would go badly. Likely, you'd mistakenly think that you walked into a bear trap, look down, and find him chewing on your foot. Your only option for a smooch would require intense bodily harm, so at this point, I'd just kick him off and run for it. Any kiss will take off most of your face anyways. With him out of the way, let's move on to the daycare attendant, or attendants. Like with the smooching guide, I will be counting Sun and Moon as separate characters, but this time, let's start with the ruined Moon. Ruined Moon, or Shattered Moon, is the broken down body of the daycare attendant, with Moon primarily in control, most likely because the lights are now perpetually off. Hobbling around on a footless leg and flying around the room like a rag doll, and though Moon is as devious and aggressive as usual, he's not exactly holding up that well. No, he is no longer a jester gremlin forcing naps onto children, but has completely degraded into madness. No more jovial bouncing and hopping, no more deftly crossing the daycare. Moon is a husk of his former self. Does he have lips? Technically, yes. So half of the daycare attendant's face is gone, but the other half does have lips, so I'll just give him two points. Because at this point, he probably is the only person who still has lips. Can he bite? Not really. So Moon's mouth does look dangerous, but the teeth can move a little. But it's not nearly enough for an effective bite. Will he bite? Yes, Moon's always had an aggressive streak, but this has been amped up. No longer putting on a little show before darting in for the kill, Moon attacks on sight, looking to put anyone who wanders in down for a nap. A dirt nap. So yes, he would. Except, so in Ruin, Moon tries to attack, he is warded off by the flashlight, which awakens Sun, and then Sun is able to effectively hold Moon in place long enough to get the generators on. So, I could give a half point, not because Moon isn't dangerous, but because in comparison to Monty or Chica, Moon has a very clear weakness and another side holding him back. But Sun can only go so far, so full mark seems fair. Is he hazardous? Moon is definitely in a broken state, but he's a little less overtly hazardous than, say, Chica or Monty. 
The most hazardous thing about the moon might just be his pointy fingers. So I suppose I'll give him a 1 on the hazard scale. This is definitely tied with his aggression. If he wasn't so outwardly rough, it wouldn't be so bad. Is he sympathetic? Surprisingly, yes. Though Moon is clearly fighting Sun and is in this crazed mindset of wanting perpetual dark, perpetual nighttime, nap time, it is clear that Moon too is suffering. Not only does he express pain in the light, mentioning his grinding gears, but the fact that a reboot is required to fix Sun and Moon suggests that likely all of this aggression, all of this ob obsessive behavior could be tied with an error. That he and Sun are just so desynced that he is malfunctioning. And for that, I do feel sympathetic. And is he cute? Mm, no. Okay, no. There's just so much exposed face, and like I said, no spinny legs or twirly face to make up for it. Moon would get 7 points, which is surprisingly good all things considered. But then again, look what he's up against so far. Though that doesn't mean a smooch with him would be all that pleasant. First of all, Moon would likely dive off of a play structure and tackle you the first time you saw him. There's a slim chance you might be able to coerce him into a goodnight kiss, but I'm not sure if that will work, all things considered. If it does, you will be rewarded with a slightly awkward kiss on half of his mouth, one that doesn't make up for the fact that he might promptly scratch your eyes out to get you to sleep once it's over. It is in your best interest to instead try to get those lights on and maybe get the chance to smooch the ruined sun instead. Spoiler alert, cover your ears if you haven't seen the ultimate guide, but sun was the most smoochable animatronic in that guide. No surprise there, but will ruined sun fare much better? While the ruined daycare attendant's problem is that the moon is shining forever and ever, let's pretend you could get a big enough flashlight to keep sun in control for a while. Okay, ruined sun. Ruined Sun does have lips. Can he bite? Nope. Weak, weird mouth teeth. Will he bite? Nope yet again. Sun is still the same sweetheart he's always been, just he's now a frantic and panicked mess unable to escape the prison that is his own body. Well, even more so than usual. So no, he is still not dangerous. Even hurting and suffering, Sun is still just as friendly and harmless as he always is. Any hazards? Well, like I said with Moon, their body is in a state of disrepair, but it's not nearly as dangerous as some of the others. Considering that Sun's not out to hurt anyone, I don't think damage is a threat. Is he sympathetic? Yes. A thousand times yes. Horrifically so. And if you don't believe me, you can go listen to Sun sobbing and singing out of tune as he laments his never-ending nap time. The lyrics seem childish and simple, but if you really look at them through the eyes of Sun, you really can see that despair. This isn't just a 30 minute window to put the kids down for. Sun is trapped inside of his body. Separated from the childish games and hobbies that he is built and programmed to partake in. Watching as everything falls apart, entirely alone save Moon, who is a screeching maniac yelling, No Sun! No Sun! at the top of his non-existent lungs. I would eagerly give Sun 12 points from sympathy alone. And is he cute? So... Yes, yes, hear me out. A son might not look cute, but the whole singing kitty songs about his eternal suffering tugs at the heartstrings in an endearing way, so yeah, he's, he's still cute, he's still cute. I'm giving Sun an 11. Look, I'd very well give him a 12 again, but he's sort of falling apart here. I have to at least take one point off, but I can't live with myself taking off anymore. Sun just needs a smooch. So what would a smooch with Sun be like? Well, ruined Sun. Well, first of all, he's probably going to be insisting that you get the generators on, so you might have to convince him first. But I don't foresee him refusing. The smooch would be a little awkward with the state of his mouth, but it gets you close enough to also give him a hug and a pat on the head. Then either he insists you turn the lights on, or he just collapses on you and starts crying about how he ran out of glitter glue five months ago and how he still misses finger painting. You know, you really ought to just tote him out to your car and take him home. Forget Gregory, this guy needs you a lot more. Though if you do that, you unfortunately will miss out on another secret sweetheart hidden inside the sun. Upon being rebooted, Sun and Moon sink together and form none other than the Eclipse. 
a soft-spoken and sweet-hearted attendant who deserves all the love in the world and none of the neglect that Fazbear Entertainment inflicts upon their staff. Like Sun and Moon, Eclipse has lips and a mouth not meant for biting, and like the sun, he would not bite. Eclipse shows no sign of aggression. In fact, his calm demeanor might make even accidental injuries with his damaged body less likely, so less hazard. As for sympathy, the Eclipse seems happy, right? Sure, he's a little dinged up, but he's whole again, and he's ready to clean up before the kids get there. The kids are never coming. Two sympathy points. And is he cute? Yes, while he virtually looks identical to Sun and Moon, save for his colorful lighting, his demure body language, clasping his hands together to his chest like this especially, gives off a very cute personality that is only held back by his deconstructed state. I would give Eclipse an 11. Same situation as Sun, very smoochable and only held back by his out-of-service state. A smooch with Eclipse would probably be quite nice. See, Eclipse is the first animatronic we've seen so far that wouldn't be actively trying to kill you or in the middle of a mental breakdown, and his friendly behavior means he might be more than happy to reward your efforts to reboot him with a smooch. No matter how awkward it is, he'll probably compliment you regardless. You smooch the moon, and you smooch the sun, and you smooch the eclipse, and now you're done. Though, let me make this clear, if Eclipse was spruced up and in a rebuilt state, he would definitely be a clean 12. I just can't overlook the exposed endoskeleton. Speaking of exposed endoskeletons that nobody wants to look at, but I guess everybody's gotta see, the endos return. They have a brief moment where they stagger around getting in the way, randomly, before they're not our problem anymore. But are they smoochable? No lips and their mouths don't seem quite capable of biting. Sure, the jump scares look like they're coming in for a bite, but they lack teeth and their mouths don't even seem capable of biting down all the way. But it's still metal compressing, so I would say maybe a half point. Would they bite? Yes, very aggressive, semi-dangerous. Technically, they can't attack you if you keep an eye on them. But it's hard to smooch with your eyes wide open, especially since you don't know how close you can get before being out of enough visual range that the endo just smacks you on the back of the head and you chip a tooth on it. Hazardous? Uh, yes, but maybe only one point. I mean, yes, exposed endoskeletons are hazardous, but in comparison to someone like Chica, I think it's worth lessening that hazard. Are they sympathetic? No, the endos haven't been shown any indication of expressing emotions, so I can't really just sympathize here if they're not really suffering. Are they cute? No. That would give the Glamrock Endos a 2, which mostly stems from the fact that they're lacking in the Charisma department. A smooch with them would probably be, well, exactly what I said. A sucker punch, a broken tooth, and a total lack of passion. At least with Monty, there's the thrill of danger mixed with the possibly misguided, I can fix him. There's none of that here. But if you are looking for someone who you might be able to fix, or who at least wants to be fixed, look no further than ruined Roxanne Wolf. In an incredible state of disrepair, Roxy is one of the few animatronics who still has her head in the right place. For the most part. That is, she seems somewhat aware of the situation, or at least her state, but is struggling to hold the last remains of her together as everything falls apart around her. Roxy no longer has lips, as most of her casing has worn away long ago. She has also replaced her endoskeleton mouth with one with little pointed teeth and a more substantial jaw than the endoskeletons, though that jaw is partially dislocated, so that's like only a half point on the bite. But would Roxy bite? Okay, so Roxy's danger rating is wonky. Her target is Gregory, and once she realizes the player isn't him, she stops hunting them. However, if you are grabbed before that moment, Roxy lifts Cassie up and slams her down before she even has a chance to vouch for herself and goes in for the bite. Basically, you better speak up fast, really fast, and hope you don't get ambushed or Roxy will throttle you thinking you're someone else. That should at least be one point, with acknowledgement that elsewise she is relatively friendly, at least to Cassie. So, I will say Roxy's partially dangerous with the acknowledgement that she might be one of the only animatronics who you can talk down. Hazardous? I'll give her only one point. She is pretty much nothing but endoskeleton, but she's rather clean and her exposed endo, for the most part, seems to be smoothed down. 
The main danger being things like her exposed wiring. Is she sympathetic? Sure, with Roxy's awareness also comes at least some knowledge of what's currently happening to her. Something even more tragic during the scene with Cassie, when she's able to actually remember her and innocently asks if she will be returning for her birthday next year. Speaking of which, that scene in general added in with the fact that she protects Cassie later, showing off her loyalty towards her. Roxy deserves so much better. At least now she does. Now on to cuteness. Uh, okay, so here's my case for Roxy's cuteness. First of all, while she's damaged and mostly endoskeleton, the endoskeleton she currently has does look kinda cute with big eye holes and a little cat-like mouth. Secondly, there's the scene where she tilts her ears and head, which is pretty cute. And finally, if you wear the mask, you can actually still see most of Roxy, how she originally looked. So yes, I would vouch that Roxy is still cute, even if I'm sort of stretching it. Taking all of this into consideration and moving the points around, I think I would give Roxy a 10. She should probably be a 9, but I'll give her a 10 with the consideration of how she can maybe be reasoned with. While there's definitely some issues trying to kiss Roxy in this state, and there is some initial danger, there is a fragile being underneath that who deserves a little love. Ironically enough, taking Roxy's behavior and ruin into context, Normal Roxanne Wolf would probably have a higher score than she had in the Ultimate Smooching Guide, but her main problem currently is the state that she's been left in, not unlike the other ruined animatronics, so some adjustments have to be made. So, how does the smooch go? You approach her in the salon, and she makes a run at you, but you race out that you're not a threat, and maybe she gets on you about being a trespasser, but maybe you could also claim that you're an employee. Likely, her facial scanner isn't working anyways. You chat politely, as one does to a co-worker, and ask for a smooch. Roxy is surprised, quietly asking if you would really want to smooch her now that she's... But at this point, you've smooched a garbage can and a crawling mouth of teeth, so that's not really a problem. You say yes, and she lets you smooch. It's like kissing a metal frame, but it's the thought that counts, and you pull back with your face intact. Unfortunately, that might not be said for our next devious little bunch, the Lil Music Man Horde. These creepy crawlies are small enough to get into the Gremlin class, which consists of small animatronics who get head smooches. They no longer get ranked on having or lacking lips and instead get one point for said head smooch. And thanks to Jam, who I will be meeting in an alley sometime in the near future, I will be ranking all of the Little Music Men. So, how I will be doing this is starting with a general score and then doing a mini Music Man tier list. One point for head smooch, though many of them have peeled faces and sharp points or gaping mouths that can still bite, though are rather small, and they're super aggressive too, so the idea that they might purposefully jab you with part of their sheer pointy metal is very likely. Hazardous? Well, beyond the mouths, most of their bodies are actually in the same state of disrepair as the original wind-up Music Men. So not that bad. Sympathetic? Not really. If anything, the place falling into ruin has given the little music men a reason to prowl around like a pack of hyenas. As broken as they may look, at least they don't have to hide in the vents anymore. And are they cute? I will give one cuteness point strictly for the mini music bunny. That would be a four for the mini music men, but which would be the best to smooch? As you definitely won't want to try smooching one of these guys while his friends are hanging around. Yikes. The most smoochable music man is one of the most deteriorated, the one with most of his face and teeth missing. This one holds few hazards and would be least likely to scratch up your face, plus this poor guy's had it rough. Next up would be the melty-faced music man. He's got his teeth intact, but no sharp bits. Next is Bunny Man. He's got some pointy bits, but they look a little flimsy, plus he is the cutest one of the bunch. Next is the one with sharp, spotty teeth. He looks like he might have a mean bite, but the rest of his face is safe, so just make sure to smooch out a nipping range. Next is the one with a partially peeled face. The location of his peeling plating makes it harder to smooch atop his head, so try to make sure and stick to the other side, and you'll be good. Next is peeled face. There's so much jagged metal that it's going to be hard to make contact without jabbing your face, but that is the price we must pay. And finally, open mouth jag teeth monstrosity. He's probably not as painful to smooch as the last one, but he's the most unsettling to look at and could definitely give a nasty bite if you weren't careful. 
any smooch with these guys is going to be uncomfortable. You have to cross your fingers and hope you find one alone, and that's one of the better ones that you find, and then slide in for a drive-by smooch before hauling tail before it alerts the others and they swarm. You can do way better. Unfortunately, you're not going to find better in Phaser Blast, our next stop. The hunting grounds of a not-so-friendly, familiar bear. So in the Ultimate Smooching Guide, spoilers again, Glamrock Freddy ranked very high due to how friendly, caring, clean, and otherwise excellent Freddy himself was. A sympathetic and lovable bear who anyone would love to replace their own absent father with. Unfortunately, this is not Freddy. This thing, whatever it is, Freddy's remains, a different Freddy, it doesn't matter. This abomination could very well be one of the least smoochable things I've encountered. Largely because it doesn't have a head. God almighty, this thing. It brings back FNAF 4's belly mouth in the worst possible way. But is it smoochable? Well, we've got this far, we can certainly try. No lips, no mouth. So you would think that that would mean that there's not a dangerous bite waiting for you. But you'd be dead wrong. The only thing mouth-like in this broken is the broken stomach hatch in its belly. The large jagged points and slices replicating long teeth as the hatch itself becomes a pair of flapping jaws. I think this goes without saying, but still no lips, and an extremely dangerous bite. One large enough to take off most of your upper half. But would it bite? Yes. This isn't friendly Papa Bear, this is something much more aggressive blindly attacking anyone who stumbles upon it. We don't know why he does this. We don't even know what it's thinking, if it can think without a head. So don't expect a Roxy scenario where you can remind this husk of what it used to be. Your pleas will fall on deaf ears, or no ears. Hazard, yes, mouth belly. It's so large that it definitely counts. Sympathy, while I would shed sympathy for Glamrock Freddy, these remains do not resemble him. They show no signs that they have any awareness, even go so far as roaring like a wild animal. My personal belief, you may disagree, is that this is a leftover body after Glamrock Freddy lost his head, and if that's the case, I pretty much don't have sympathy for Ruined Freddy because he's not Freddy, he's just a leftover body. Sort of like an endo. In fact, yeah, he kind of does act like an aimless, feral endoskeleton. And you know what I think of endos. Uh, maybe I'll push a half a point because of how sad he looks. Finally, is he cute? Not anymore. In the ultimate smooching guy, Glamrock Freddy got an impressively high score, and yet now his headless remains have dropped from an excellent 10 to a pitiful 1. And that 1 is really scraping it. I was totally planning on giving him a 0, but this is just too depressing, so I slapped a 1 on him. Forget it, no, I, okay, Freddy has got to get a zero. I can't validate smooching this when I can't, couldn't validate smooching the nightmares. There is no reason you would want to kiss Ruined Freddy. A smooch with Ruined Freddy is almost a guaranteed death sentence. Unless you're aiming to kiss the shoulder, which gets you both in grabbing and belly bite range, you're going to have to try to kiss said belly, and it's going to open its maw, shove you in, and crunch down hard on anything left sticking out. At that point, just dredge up a soggy, moldy Freddy plush out of the wreckage of the Pizzaplex and smooch that. Trust me, it's way better. By the way, Glamrock Freddy's repaired head would probably deserve an 11 and a nice pillow to sit on. Next, we have the staff bots. Very few of them are still functional, but since I didn't include them in the ultimate guide, I'll do it here. The staff bots are robotic attendants made to serve the guests at the Pizzaplex and replace the need for inhuman employees. Unlike the animatronics who display emotions and the ability to comprehend existential thoughts, the staff bots have very little autonomy. They do whatever they're programmed to and seldom deviate from that. Though whether this is just a ruse and they do have some form of sentience is unknown. We don't even know what staff stand for, as it is an acronym. But are they smoochable? Staff bots do not have lips, in fact they do not have a mouth at all. Though this erases the concerns of biting, are they dangerous? Well, other than a few hacked or infected staff bots in the sewer or the ones controlled by Vanny, staff bots are almost always docile. In Ruin especially, the staff bots are mostly in a state of disrepair, with few still functional. Taking this into account and not counting the instances of being hacked, the staff bots are harmless. But are they hazardous? Well, it sort of depends on the state the staff bots are in. Though, 
even the staff bots in disrepair are in much less disrepair than the worst of the ruined animatronics. Normal staff bots are not hazardous, but the leftover staff bots seem pretty rough and, but again, not the worst we've seen. Again, not counting the sewer bots and leaning more towards the ruined bots. Are they sympathetic? A little bit. So the staff bot sympathy is hard to put your finger on. As I stated, we don't know if the staff bots can feel anything at all, but there's something so sad about seeing them in such a state. They bring out sympathy in me, at least. Poor babies. Are they cute? Yeah, I'd say so. This gives normal staff bots an 8. Broken staff bots would also get an 8 with a higher hazard and a higher sympathy balancing it out. There is also the mask bot, the former map bot. Once he used to ambush unsuspecting victims and thrust maps upon them. Now he still does that, admittedly, but now he has a nifty pair of bunny ears and is passing out thematically matching masks. Though he's the source of few harmless jump scares, I think he's just charismatic enough to get a 9. Smooching staff bots isn't too uncomfortable of a scenario. You just smooch them in the general area of where their mouth might be with few repercussions. They might flag for security, if it still exists, depending on when you get to the pizza plex, or they might just not really care. Maskbot seems rather chill and is willing to make contact without flagging security, so maybe he would be up for the smooch. But the staff bots aren't the only attendee bots in the pizza plex. We have the wet floor sign bots, bots that work as wet floor signs. Yes, unbelievably, Fazbear Entertainment will invest money in making functional robots only meant to stand in one place, but won't invest in better building material, equipment, safety means, or to slightly balance out the hefty prices at the Pizzaplex and thus encourage repeat customers. Well, this is what we got, and at least they're pretty cute. But are they smoochable? The wet floor bots do not have lips or mouths. Maybe they would count as gremlins in which you would maybe throw in a point for head smooch. Either way, they are not aggressive. Though they will occasionally flag security if you fool with them too much. Though in Ruin, you are able to deactivate them without them teleporting in any animatronics. Though whether this is because they're docile or because the systems aren't being manhandled is unclear. Are they hazardous? No. Even in Ruin, the neglected wet floor bots seem relatively put together and not too grimy. Are they sympathetic? Not really. The wet floor bots seem to be just doing their own thing. Except there is one little thing, but I would attribute that sympathy to someone else, not them. Are they cute? Yes, they're pretty cute. That would give the wet floor sign bots a similar score to the staff bots at an 8, possibly a 9. They're cute enough to deserve a smooch and not nearly as dangerous as the other animatronics, so that alone gives them extra brownie points. A smooch with a wet floor sign bot would involve you, well, leaning over and smooching them on the top of the head. They can't smooch back. They can just stare at you, watching and thinking, and wondering why. You too may also wonder why, and the answer usually is because they're there. But hidden amongst the silent witnesses lies a voiceless victim hidden in the back of the bowling alley. Broken into pieces, crusted with dust, forgotten, abandoned, but still alive. Still alive and always watching through those same wet floor sign bots. There lies the remains of Glamrock Bonnie. Glamrock Bonnie has been almost completely deconstructed, but he is still somewhat functional, assumedly aware, which is terribly tragic. If anyone, he deserves a smooch. Glamrock Bonnie does not have lips, but his mouth isn't too dangerous, being mostly smooth and lacking the capability of a powerful bite. Well, if he could even move enough to bite. Yes, regardless of Bonnie's demeanor or behavior, both are an enigma to us. He is completely unable to harm anyone, even if he wanted to. Is he hazardous? Not too much. Normally, I would say that his body is so damaged that it might be a risk to get close. But again, Bonnie can't move. Any accidental injury would be due to your own clumsiness. Is he sympathetic? Yes, absolutely. This whole situation is so terribly sad. You would have to have a heart of cement to not feel for this bunny. And considering that you're considering smooching him, I assume that you don't. Finally, is he cute? Yes, even though broken, Bonnie is cute. This gives Bonnie a 10. You may think this is high for a bot that's broken, but Bonnie deserves a smooch, and that matters more than a little dried oil, a little dust, or accidentally cutting open your palm trying to lean down and get said smooch. Look at what he's had to go through. Are you going to deny him the only bit of affection he's gotten in years? But how would this smooch work? 
Well, first of all, you would have to work out a way to signal through his eyes or through the wet floor or sign bots to figure out if it's okay. One blink for yes, no blinks for no, something like that to make sure he's cool with this. Then you crouch down, lean down, pretty much get on the floor, and give him a smooch. He cannot respond. You don't know if he liked it or not. You don't know if he even felt it. Your heart breaks with the knowledge that you cannot help him. You are only one person, and this is all you can give him. There is also Helpy the Helper program, who is occasionally overtaken by something sinister. Sometimes he's a friendly face, recognizing us as a technician. Then the yellow eyes kicks in, and he starts talking down to us in a very casual way. One too casual for an automated system. But he is unsmoochable. We can see him on the screen, but he's never physically real enough to smooch. So, disqualified. Now it is time to travel to the bottom of the sinkhole and into the dregs of Freddy's forgotten things. And there, past the red lake and beyond the pit of despair, you find it. The source of true evil in the pizzaplex. This nondescript endoskeleton. Don't let its wimpy and otherwise blank look fool you. This creature is a mastermind of mimicking and murder, which is why it's referred to as the Mimic. If you can look past the risk of imminent death, assuming that you've already smooched ruined Freddy, you might, for some reason, be tempted to lay one on this violent, charismatic, deficient creature. So exactly how would that go? Well, not to get ahead of myself, but badly. Firstly, Mimic does not have lips. But not just that, he also has a mouth of stiff, dummy-like fake teeth. They might not be sharp, but that would still be a painful bite if he can lock that metal in place. Imagine a human biting you, but then having metal backing it instead of bone. With jaw power like that, you don't need sharp teeth to start breaking skin. And anything underneath. I don't think we need to ask if he would bite. Odds are, no, the Mimic would not bite. It would just either tear you to pieces, yank out your windpipe, or unscoop itself into your chest cavity. Yeah, the Mimic isn't just aggressive. This is advanced aggression. It will totally body anything that walks up on it. Unbelievably, consider, again, its tiny body and baby face. Not circus baby baby, but infantile baby. But you get what I mean. Is it hazardous? I would say yes for two reasons. One, the whole tear apart on contact thing. But most importantly, this is an ancient robot from, what, 50 years ago that's been hanging out in a mildew-ridden costume by a big pit of rancid and polluted water. You'd probably catch something funky off this guy. Is he sympathetic? No. It lures in children, it ruins lives, and it might have an attitude problem. Is he cute? No. Mimic gets our second zero of the lot. You might wonder how this thing with an intact head could possibly be as bad as Ruined Freddy, but its rancid demeanor, overall aggression, and total lack of cool factor lead to it being a relatively pointless smooch. I can't stress enough, though, that a smooch with Mimic would be pretty much an immediate death sentence, which would only fly if he was cuter. Now, with Mimic's primary shtick being that he mimics stuff, you might think that Mimic could just mimic the moves of a better kisser, but it doesn't work like that. And even if it did, it wouldn't work at all. You've been smooching floozies all up and down the Vegas Strip, and none of them smooch as good as your old sport. So who's to say this robot's got a chance? So yeah, the Mimic is a lost cause. Now, if Mimic was wearing the old mildew patchwork costume, I might give it a one. It's not any less dangerous, but there's something comedic enough about trying to smooch this that almost makes it worth considering. Speaking of which, the Mimic also has a slew of mascot costumes that it can put on. Or, well, in theory, in practice he tears them all apart and turns three functional costumes into one lousy one. Yet, I will still rank these suits separate from the Mimic on smooch ability. Though keep in mind that they are not animatronics. There's no AI, period. These are just like smooching oversized old teddy bears. In general, I would give the mascots as a collective unit a 5. They're not traditionally dangerous, they can't bite, but they are old, rotting suits that could be carrying all sorts of deadly mold on them. They're not especially cute, but arguably slightly cute. They can't feel anything, again, oversized teddy bears, save the fact that they've got a semi-uncanny valley look. But how do they stack up against each other? First is the Jersey Lion mascot, a lion in a letterman jacket with a neat mane and a tear in its belly. He isn't too bad, but he's a little uneasy on the eyes. But he looks just goofy enough to balance it out. The problem is that he's just so much fabric and cotton that 
Yeah, if he, they are molding, then he is the moldiest. Next is the librarian-looking crow mascot. Maybe it's the glasses to the apron, but I find her design much softer and less uncomfortable than the others. She reminds me kind of of a homemaker, or perhaps a grandmother. Her beak looks like it might be a plasticky material, which means it might be easier to wipe over with, with an antibacterial wipe, and might be slightly cleaner because of it. There is an elephant clown, too. He's... Look, I love clowns, but this guy's a weird case. He looks like when cleaned up, he could have been really cute, but in practice, he's pretty hard to look at. But depending on what material his trunk is made of, he might have the same wipe-down disinfectant possibility as Crow Lady. Then we have the misstitched mascot. This thing is probably the only mascot that would get a danger rating because of these intestine-like tubes hanging out of its belly. The thing is a blend of all three previous mascots ripped apart and sewn together. There is a theory that this is to make it look more like Gregory, but I like to think that the rancid costumes just fell apart when Mimic tried to put them on and he had to improvise. So I would say the librarian is the best smooch, then probably the lion regardless of the mold. I suppose they're all pretty moldy. Then the elephant clown, then the misstitched mascot. Any of these default to one if they're being worn by Mimic, because again, they're just suits. Now, we move on to the final smoochable animatronic, though that is not an animatronic at all. Known as the entity through much of Ruin, this grinning rabbit fellow is known as the Mexis, or the MXES, and it is a physical embodiment of the security system looking to keep Mimic trapped and keep intruders out and far away from it. Deceptively appearing to be the villain, while the Mexis is willing to do whatever it takes to do its job, it's really not the bad guy, even if he constantly has this resting smarm eating grin. But is he smoochable, especially considering his AR matronic status? In the smooching guide, we went over how AR, VR, hallucination, animatronics, or beings like that would be disqualified. But Ruin changes things up. With the Vanny mask, you are able to interact with the virtual world and even affect the real one. So smooching the Mexis is suddenly back on the table. He is not disqualified. So let's begin. Does he have lips? Bafflingly, yes. Okay, so they aren't molded or painted on lips, but he does have a detailed bunny mouth that does seem to shape and change beyond just closing his teeth. Can he bite? I actually don't think so. Well, I know so, and I'll address why in the danger rating. But that aside, Mex's mouth has two modes. Wide grin of intimidating but not sharp teeth pulled into a smirk, and clothes looking like he's sucking a lemon. He doesn't seem to ever open his mouth, let alone make any motion to bite. And compared to some of the others, it's also an especially clean mouth. But is he dangerous? Yes, with caveats. Mexis was created to keep the Mimic contained. Upon entering the Pizzaplex, he doesn't immediately attack, and it's not until Cassie starts making progress into the Pizzaplex when he starts ramping up his efforts, even steering the animatronics to try and stop her. But that also means that the Mexis isn't actually dangerous if you're not actively approaching the sinkhole. Mexis might look devious, but knowing in hindsight what he's doing, it might not be so. It may simply be programmed to see any interloper as the bad guy. So, at times the Mexis betrays very human gestures. It even seems to react to being sucked back into its box with shock and maybe fear. This suggests that it has some ability to feel emotions, but we don't have any read on how it thinks. Will it continue to ruthlessly go after a threat? Or would it be willing to smooch if given the promise that you would leave right afterwards? It's unclear. What is clear? is that the Mexis itself actually can't physically harm anyone. Yeah, he can jump scare all he wants, he can creep up behind you and pop in unexpectedly, but unless you have a weak heart or startle easily, he can't do anything to you. And that also means he's not hazardous either, at least not physically. Sure, it looks like his arms are made out of electricity, but if they held any form of danger against humans, then I would assume he would use those to stop the player. He doesn't. So, likely, they don't. Is he sympathetic? No. Well, eh, well, maybe. Again, it's hard to feel bad for something with this look on its face. But as I went over earlier, he does express emotions, such as in the second where he looks fearful as he's being trapped in his box. 
By the way, trapped in his box, Mexus should have been a puppet. Entity? More like Marion Entity. Okay, anyway, jokes aside, the Mexus is doing its job and might now either be shut down or, as it looks, physically trapped in its box body thing. I'll give it some sympathy for that. Finally, is he cute? Mexus isn't cute. Mexus is far from cute. But it's hard to not say that he doesn't look interesting. Charismatically chiseled, accompanied by his, at times, expressive animations. He almost looks like a partial cartoon character inserted into the world, a sharp contrast from the overly realistic mascots. So I wouldn't say he's cute, but I will give him points for being interesting to look at. A smooch with the Mexus could be, well, I mean, this all sort of really depends on if he takes you up on your offer. This blasted rabbit throwing all sorts of stuff at you, watching as he smooch every bot in the Pizzaplex and somehow survive, he hates you. You hate him by now, likely because he keeps slamming metaphorical doors in your face. But as you run out of animatronics to smooch, you realize he is the last, and you really, assuming you survive the mimic, he is the last, and you confront and proposition. At this point, he's likely going to agree to it. Somewhere in his robot brain, he realizes that the faster you get out of here, the better. So, the smooch is on. You throw on the mask and lean in, and it feels like smooching the mask. But there's something to it. This smug rabbit, this rival you could never beat, the animatronic you wouldn't smooch. You have finally won. You have beaten the rabbit, even if he's still looking at you like he's about to drop something heavy on your head. Imagine it like shaking hands at the end of a long game, except you're planting one on rabbit-shaped spyware. There's also this hideous Wendigo entity that's speculated to be, and likely is, Beta Mexis. I wouldn't smooch it. And with that, you finally leave the Pizzaplex. You drive out of the parking lot and straight to the hospital. There's also an alternate ending where if you successfully smooch all the ruined animatronics, you get a secret cutscene of Roxy, Eclipse, and Glamrock Bonnie's repaired head. Don't ask how the head repair is still working, it just is. Chilling out in the car while you're getting a blood transfusion and part of your face sewn back on. Yes, it was Monty. So, the ratings are going to be arranged in the same way I did it last time, using the final scores to assemble the tier list. The only disqualified animatronic this time around was Helpy, because he's just a flat cartoon image that accompanied a helper program that is occasionally hijacked by something else. So, not smoochable as far as I can tell. So, let's begin the tier list proper. Starting with dead last, we have Ruined Freddy and the Mimic. This is a catastrophic decline for something even related to Glamrock Freddy, but I'm not really shocked that the Mimic's here. In the end, there's so much danger and not a lot of sympathy surrounding these two, one being a leftover body and the other being the deconstructor of humankind. It's just not worth it, and I don't imagine you could look past the obvious danger to do it. In the F tier, we have the Glamrock Endos and Monty. Both dangerous, but with the Glamrock Endos lacking personality or sympathy to make them more appealing, and Monty going full piranha mode, it may be more appealing just to kiss a real gator. Well, maybe a baby. In the D tier, we have Ruin Chica and the Mini Music Men. Ruin Chica is stuffed and overflowing with funkier trash than even the stuff in Security Breach, and is borderline zombie-like, pretty much eating anyone who gets in between her and a pile of shriveled up potato wedges. Meanwhile, the music men, the mini music men, are once again vicious little creatures with hazards on their heads who hunt in packs. It's no wonder that smooching these two would be less than appealing. In the C tier, we have all of the Mimic's mascot costumes, moldy and lifeless, but not immediately willing to kill you. Sometimes kissing an inanimate object is more appealing than the options on the menu. B tier consists of Ruined Moon, the Staff Bots, and the Wet Floor Bots. While Moon is damaged but semi-sympathetic, the staff and wet floor bots are just doing their job and were wrongly left behind. Many of them are incapable of doing harm and deserve a smooch for their troubles. The wet floor bots win the tier because of their cuteness. In A tier, we have the Mask Bot, Ruined Roxy, and Glamrock Bonnie. Mask Bot is pretty much just a better staff bot, while Ruined Roxy is a better Roxanne than we got in the main game, and Glamrock Bonnie is the most tragic thing we've seen in ages. I place Bonnie as the highest of the tier over Roxy because there is the slight danger rating with Roxy, while Glamrock Bonnie can't do anything anymore. 
Either way, they're still both up there. And finally, the top of the tier list and the most smoochable animatronics, the S tier. We have Sun, Eclipse, and, oh. There was a point halfway through writing this when I realized that the chiseled rabbit was actually going to beat out a bunch of beloved characters. It came the moment I found the AR loophole because then hazards, dangers, and bites were all swiped off the table and all that was left was this smug security guard. And as you are aware, here in the FNAF fanbase, we love those. It's not like, it's not like I like him or anything. But yeah, Eclipse is the most smoochable. I think that comes to no surprise. He's a gentle sweetheart, only held back by a broken body. Of course, the most smoochable animatronic would be a variation of the last one. It just makes sense. Especially since he's such a soft-spoken sweetheart, you know? So, this has been the ruined animatronic smooching guide. All in all, these animatronics are still in major states of disrepair, and smooching them is going to be a risk no matter what. But at least half of them have more fleshed out personalities compared to some of the classics, some of them have major upgrades from even the base game, and almost all of them are at least somewhat sympathetic in their current state. At least a few of them deserve a warm blanket and a cup of cocoa. Though, toting that around the place with this guy dogging you makes that a little less doable. This is not the final smooching video. Someday in the future, I will do a book animatronic smooching video where all of the much more intact animatronics will likely rank lower than these dilapidated bots. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching.